What's up everybody? Today um, we are going to be looking at C strings here um, and one of the first things you might notice is our header file um, C string. Um, this header file includes some of the basic functions that we need to perform C string operations such as um, string copy, string compare, and string length which I'll cover in a few minutes but I just wanted to point that out. Um, these other header files are included for um, further examples here. So up until now we've kind of avoided discussing character arrays because um, character arrays are of a special interest and you process them differently than you process other arrays. Um, C++ provides many functions that you can use with character arrays in our C string header file here. Um, and the character array is basically an array whose components are of type char, the data type char, as you can see here. Now, the most widely used characters in the ASCII character set um, is the null character, and in C++ the null character is represented as, in um, quotations here, or um, the uh, backslash followed by a zero. So this entire statement here stores the null character in CH, where CH is a character variable. Now, the null character plays an important role in processing character arrays. Because the uh, correlating sequence of the null character is zero, the null character is less than any other characters in the char data set. Okay? Um, so the most um, commonly used term for character arrays is C strings. There is a subtle difference between character arrays and C strings. Um, remember um, that a string is a sequence of zero or more characters, and strings are enclosed in double quotation marks. In C++, C strings are null terminated, um, so that means that the last character in a C string is always the null character. A character array might not contain the null character, but the last character in a C string is always the null character. As you can see, the null character should not appear anywhere in the C string except the last position. So these are fo um, following, these are examples of C strings here, Jack M. White and Hello There. From the definition of C strings, it's clear that there is a difference between these two A's right here. Um, the first one is character array, character A. The second is C string A, because C strings are null terminated. A represents two characters, A and the zero, the the null character. Similarly, the C string hello represents six characters here. If we just had this hello stored in a C string, it would be H E L L O and then the null termination character. To store A, we would only need one memory cell of type char, but to store A, we would need two memory cells of type char, one for A and one for the null character. So to store the C string hello in computer memory, we need six cells of type char, logically. So if you consider this following statement here, um, the statement declares an array name of 16 components of type char. Because um, C strings are null terminated and name has 16 components, the largest string that can be stored in name is length um, of length 15. If you store a C string of length 10 in name, the first 11 components of name are used and the last five are left unused. So this statement here, whoops, this one here, declares an array containing 16 components of type char and stores the C string Joseph in it. Um, during char array variable declarations, C++ allows the C string notation to be used in the initialization statement. So basically, this statement here is equivalent to this statement here. Okay? Now, you can't do that with a normal array, but a C string you can. It's pretty cool. Um, remember that the size of the array can be omitted if the array is initialized during the declaration. So this statement here... Um, declares a C string variable name of a length large enough, um, in this case uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, plus, because we remember we need to include the 0, and stores Joseph in it. There is a difference between the last two statements. Both statements store Joseph and name, but the size of name in statement, this statement here, is 16, and the size of name here is um, 6, 2, 3, 4, 7. Um, most rules that apply to other arrays also apply to character arrays. Um, if, if you consider 
the um, char name. Suppose you want to store Lyndon B. Johnson in it in the name because aggregate operations such as assignment and comparison are not allowed on arrays. Um, these following statements will be illegal. You cannot, you know, jack, store Jack M. White in name directly like that, but you can do it during initialization. Um, C++ also provides a set of functions that can be used for st C string manipulation, and we're going to look at those now. They are included in our C string header file. So if you consider um, these declarations here, we have three character arrays, one new name, one my name, one your name, and an integer variable called length. Um, string copy basically will copy the second parameter into the first parameter. So my name after the statement executes will be equal to Joseph Tomlin. And then the length basically is the string length function, um, my name. So we're going to output my name, and notice here we're outputting directly to the console this character C string array, what's whatever stored in it. You can do that. It's, it's really cool. So let's go ahead and run this and look at the first output statement. Okay, so my name, Joseph Tomlin, is length 13. Okay, now we're going to assign length a new length value with hard coded hello world in there. Output the new value of new length value is 12. Remember, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay. Um, then we're going to copy Jack M. White into your name, and then copy your name into new name. And we'll output your name and new name, and they will both be Jack White or Jack M. White. And as you can see, your name is Jack M. White, and new name is Jack M. White. And then when you compare strings, um, it's what, what, what's, what's going on here in the string compare function, um, this will return a value less than zero if the first parameter is less than the second parameter. It will return zero if both parameters are the same, and it will return a value greater than zero if parameter one is greater than parameter two. Um, because Bill, the B in Bill is less than L in Lisa, um, this will return a, a, a negative value, and as you can see, it's negative one. Okay. So we're going to again copy Mark into my name and copy John into your name. And then we're going to compare both my name and your name. And we will output whatever the case may be here. So if your name is compared to my name is less than zero, uh, your name will be less than my name. And as you can see, John is less than Mark because the J is less than the M here. Um, if you take a look at reading and writing strings here, um, basically we have an example here. You can input, basically this, this statement here will store whatever is, is input into example. The length of the input C string must be less than or equal to 30 because we need one extra space for the null character. So if the length of the input string is 4, the computer stores the four characters that are um, input and the null character is 0. If the length of the input string is more than 30, um, because there's no check on the, the array index bounds, the computer continues storing the string <coughs> and whatever memory cell follows name. So this can cause some problems because data in the adjacent memory cells will be corrupted. So Remember that um, the extraction operator, this this the n operator here, skips all leading white space characters and stops reading data into the current variable as soon as it finds the first white space character or invalid data. So as a result, C strings that contain blanks cannot be read using the extraction operator. So this would only be good for like one word without a space in it. <clears throat> so if you wanted to input, um, use the cn to gather data in, into example with some blanks in it, you would use the cn.get. Again, we've only been using it with one parameter. You can include two parameters. Uh, basically, the get function together with the input stream variable, such as cn. So this statement will store the next m characters or all characters until the new line character n is found 
and it will be stored into the example. So if you consider um, these following statements here, we have the declaration um, C string array called str of 31 components, which technically will only hold 30. We're going to prompt the user to input a string. We were going to get the string, and we're going to output the string. So we can have spaces here. So let's take a look at this. Enter a string. We'll go hello world. And as you can see, hello world is, is um, output. So let's comment that example out. And the next example here, suppose we had two lines of input and you wanted to store the first line in the character string str1 and the second line in character string str2. You would need a separate discard variable um, because the, um, the numbers of character in the first line of input will stop reading at the new line. You must read and discard the new line character at the end of the first line to store the second line into um, string 2 here. So that's what this um, extra character variable will read the new line, discard it, and then get the, the next line of input um, into string 2. So let's go ahead and enter two lines of input. As you can see here, we're going to put summer is hot, winter is cold. And then as you can see, we have our summer is hot and winter is cold stored on separate lines. So that's how you would do that. It's really important that you read the new line character and discard it. You just have to read it. It's not technically discarding it. It's just getting it to the next um, line of input basically is what's going on. And then let's comment that out. Okay, um, since we're on the topic of C strings, I also wanted to go over the runtime specification of input and output files here. Um, again, I have two input files, or um, an output file and an input file declared, called in file and out file. We have a character, a C string called file name. It can contain 50 components. Prompt the user to enter the file name. And notice here we're gathering it with um, CN because it's not going to have any spaces in it. And then we're going to put the file name as a parameter into nfile.open. Um, this basically is um, just gathering the name of the file. Now, we're doing this with a character array. You can also do this with a string variable. Um, however, basically variables of type string, um, it needs to be a null terminated string, a C string. So if we use a variable of type string to read the name, of the input or output file and then use that variable to open a file the uh, value of the variable must first be converted to a C string uh, which is basically a null terminated string. The header file string contains the function C string which converts the value of type string to a null terminated character array. So basically to use to convert the uh, file of the string type we just we gather the input and then we in file dot open file Oh crap, I did that. Um, File.cstring. Basically, that's the member access operator, an operation performed on this file variable here. Um, this will convert it to a C string, this function, and then we close. Basically, that will open the end file with a string variable. So, character arrays are pretty unique. You can output them directly into the console and gather input directly into the console, whereas a regular array would have to be done you know, input and output data component-wise, you know, per component. So that's one of the really unique things about character arrays, or C strings. Um, so that's all we're going to cover for today. Uh, let me know what you guys think. If this helped you out, I'd really appreciate some likes. So um, please subscribe. Uh, thank you for watching, and I hope to see you for my next video.